Welcome to the uh, Whitman Finance Committee. The, today is Tuesday, June 9th, 2020 at 7.03. I'll uh, just take a minute and review our agenda. Everybody should have got this by email. We have uh, everyone present right now except for Rosemary. And um, we have meeting minutes. For, uh, right now we have April 21st. And we have May 19th that were emailed in the last couple of days. That still leaves us a couple of meetings uh, that are outstanding. <coughs> Mantha is working on. And the reserve fund uh, stands at uh, $30,314. Public forum is temporarily suspended due to the COVID-19 limitations. I uh, ask anybody that has uh, anything that they want to present to the finance committee under public forum to get a hold of me by email, R-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N -E at Whitman-MA.GOV, or you can call my home phone, 781-447-4366. So under new business tonight, we do have a, a line item transfer request from the ACO. Old business, uh, subcommittee reports from the Building Facilities Capital Expenditure Committee. Uh, there's no report from the Regional um, uh, Agreement Amendment Committee. We'll review the ATM warrant. We just have a few more items there and then we can um, move into Article 2. Uh, it's probably in the interest of time, it may be a good idea just to um, uh, uh, maybe make a vote just to reconsider the previous votes in its entirety, I think, instead of looking back at them individually. Something to think about it, but it will certainly um, move to the to the will of the body. Um, uh, the media outreach, a little update on that. Um, town administrator, I believe, uh, selectmen are meeting tonight, so I we may see uh, Frank uh, at the end. And the upcoming meetings, we just have one left. Next week will be June sixteenth. So I plan on posting both meetings, June sixteenth and June twenty second, which is annual town meeting. Uh, tomorrow or Thursday. So that's it for the agenda. Um, probably go right into the meeting minutes. Does everybody have a copy of the two meeting minutes that were emailed? Yes. Okay, yep. so we have uh, April 21st yes. and May 19th. So we'll take April 21st first. So April 21st was tabled for additional information and or clarification. So and I think it was Rosemary that requested the additional information. No, that was April 14th. April 21st, um, we never reviewed before. Oh, we have not reviewed. Very good. Okay, thank you, Samantha. So April 21st meeting minutes, uh, we have the first page, uh, one of three. Anything find, uh, anyone find anything on page one that they would like to amend or Put anything additionally in? Bear, uh, bear with me for one minute. I didn't get a chance to read these, but I'm, I'm reading them now. Oh, okay. Do you want to take a minute to look at it now, or would you like to table them to uh, another meeting? No, no uh, just just slow down a little bit. I'm, I'm right behind you. Okay, very good. Hey, Rick. Yeah. Hey, Rick. Uh, Go ahead. Rosemary just texted me that says that uh, the host has another meeting in progress. I re forwarded the information, so hopefully she'll be on. Okay. So she was having trouble logging in. Is that what you mean? I, I have no clue. Uh, well, yeah, I don't, I don't have a text from her, so. Okay. All right, Dave, anything on page one? All set? Okay. All right, so we're on page two. The second page of the meeting minutes from April 21st.
Here comes Rosie. Yep, finish. Hey guys. Rosemary, welcome. Hello. So, sorry about so my technical difficulties. We just went a little bit of a review of the agenda and now we're just uh, starting into reviewing the meeting minutes of April 21st. So if you have a copy of it. I read um, it. But okay. So there was um, nothing on page one. Did you have any edits that you had looked at previously? Mm -hmm. All right, so page two, um, anybody have anything that they want to add uh, or anybody need more time? Okay. All right, so we'll put the final page is page three. <clears throat> And this meeting, we did have this, I think we had um, Selectman Lamatina came in at the end to give us an update on the uh, town election date setting by the Board of Selectmen who were meeting the same night. Does anybody have anything else uh, that they would like to amend or add, take away from the third page? All right, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to accept the April 21st meeting minutes as presented. A motion by Chuck. Second by Kathleen. Second by Kathleen. Further discussion? Okay, so let's see, we had um, nobody in absence, so we'll have a roll call vote on the meeting minutes. John? Yes. Al? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Dave? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Scott? Yes. Rosemary? Yes. And I vote yes. 9-0. Accepted. The next meeting minutes are a little lengthy. Uh, let's see. There are actually six pages with this um, May 19th, 2020 meeting minutes. Um, so on the first page, we'll take a little time. Dave, you didn't review this one either previously. You're muted, Dave. Dave, you're muted. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a little time. Um, I have a correction. Um, on page one, about halfway down, uh, the sentence that starts with the assessment for Hanson is 11 million, and for Whitman, it would be 15,791.075. Um, that's not correct. Um, the assessment is actually 15,367,391 and 75 cents. I don't know. Yep, that's that. what I have too on that same um, summary of the meeting. That's what I have. 11,214,176.79. So, so actually the assessment for Hanson is incorrect as well. So 11,214,176.79 would be 11,214,177. John, is that what you have? Yes. Okay, so Samantha, could you correct those two numbers? Do you need them re re read again? So, okay, so Hanson is 11214177 That's correct. All right, say Whitman one more time. 15367392. Yep. 392, Jesus. <laughs> I wasn't even close. <laughs> I've really been twice. Okay, got it. That's all right. Good catch. Yeah, I I wouldn't I wouldn't have looked back there had someone not noticed. All right, anything else on page one, Kathleen? I just have a question on those numbers because um, did, we were on tape, so we can check it. But I believe these were the accurate numbers as of May nineteenth, and then the superintendent 
added uh, some money from E&D and some savings from fiscal 20 to reduce the total assessment by 600,000. So I actually think the, the numbers in this document are accurate because the assessment was not presented to the town by the uh, Whitman Hanson treasurer, David Leary, until on a document May 27th. So I think after, the, after our meeting, the superintendent found money to reduce the overall assessment and it would have translated uh, $360,000 uh, less to Whitman and $240,000 less to Hanson. But I believe on May 19th, these were the numbers we were looking at. So I think, well, looking at my notes from the school committee meeting, those numbers that were updated were the numbers Correct. that I read from my, that, that was the meeting that they set those. That was the meeting where they all got together and they all thought this, this thing was a great idea and they took money out of uh, E&D. And this, this is what their final presentation. Right. Because they, they also said the numbers, if the statutory method was used, they then gave the other numbers, mm -hmm. which was 12,025,334 for Hanson and 15,156,235 for Whitman. I, I agree with you, Rick, because I'm looking at a document that school committee met on May, on Monday, May 18th. That was a special meeting that they did when they voted that through. And the document that I'm looking at is dated May 18th from the school with those numbers on it. I can, you want me to share it? So. Right. So May 18th, Kathleen was the day before our meeting. That's right. what these numbers came from that right. particular meeting. So. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm very confident that these are the numbers that should be in our meeting minutes. Correct. But if you think otherwise we could table it if you wanted to. No, I'm fine. You have documentation. Okay. My recommend, right, my recollection was just the reverse, that we met before they met. But if nope, they I met on the 18th, we met on the 19th, then I'm fine with the way that you and John have made the uh, adjustments. Okay, great. Thank you. Anything else on page one? Anybody? Moving to the second page. So there were line item transfers that were voted on at the end of this particular page. And then we got into the discussion about the media outreach. Anybody have anything on the second page? Raise your hand if you need more time. Moving on to the page three, third page of six. So this is where we voted to approve the media outreach document. Um, uh, then uh, Dave uh, gave an update on the capital committee. And then at the end of this page is when we started uh, voting uh, recommendations for warrant articles beginning with P1. All right, does anybody have anything on the third page? Raise your hand if you need more time. Moving on to the fourth page. So this is when we started voting the articles uh, for the warrant articles, P2, P4, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 10, and 11 on this page. Raise your hand if you need more time. All right, moving on to the fifth page. Again, moving forward through the uh, warrant articles. Uh, three, five, six, nine, ten, and eleven. And voting recommendations for those warrant articles.
Raise your hand if you need more time. Okay, and then the final page, sixth of six pages, uh, was uh, Warren Article 12, 13, motion to adjourn at uh, 10 minutes and nine. Anybody need more time? Okay, any other amendments on any of the documents? So we do have an amendment on the first page. I'll entertain a motion to accept the May 19th, 2020 meeting minutes as amended. I'll make that motion. Okay, motion by John. I'll second. Second by Ralph. Further discussion. And everybody was in attendance, so we'll go around the board. Vote, uh, John. Yes. Al. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Dave. Dave, you're on mute. Dave, we'll give you a yes, but you're still muted. Ralph. Yes. Scott. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. Chuck. Yes. And I vote yes, 9-0. Thank you very much. Samantha, great job on the meeting minutes. Those are pretty long meetings that we have. And long meetings coming up. So the next thing on the agenda is the um, uh, request from the um, animal control for a line item transfer. Everybody get the uh, copy that I forwarded from June 3rd. Yep. It's a request for a year end transfer from line 206B animal control expense in the amount of $2,993.49 to line 206A, which is animal control salaries. The explanation is earlier this fiscal year, the ACO was out of work and the secondary ACO had to cover both shifts resulting in a shortfall for the salary line. Uh, so there is some backup attached. One, two, three pages of payroll information and the um, expend report from July 1st to June 30th from July 1st, uh, 19 to June 30th, 2020, expend report, year to date. Um, <clears throat> questions, comments, anybody? No. Al, you're muted, did you wanna say something? Are you live? You are now. Uh, I thought we, Frank told we'd be resolved by the year end and that was the year end uh, back in, uh, uh, I don't know, how many months ago was that? This should be resolved. Yeah, so I don't have any further information. I don't know yeah. that the person is back to work. I don't have any information like that. I didn't get yeah. any um, uh, updates. I had. I haven't been to town hall this week, so usually I would stop in and get a little bit more update, but I didn't have an opportunity to do that. So we're still, we're st we're still wanting to fund this? So it is a line item transfer from their budget. Yeah. So it's not a, it's not a reserve fund transfer, which obviously would you know, I think warrant some additional information or discussion. So, so so it's not resolved. Can you ask Frank why it's not resolved yet? Sure. Yeah. I mean, he committed to us by year end, which is December. So uh, just a thought. Right. My my guess my guess is it it is resolved. But remember, I think initially there was just not enough money in there. And then he was paying that um, the extra at one point um, to to make up the difference from the workers' comp. So well, this, uh, I'm thinking that's why he would have run short, but he's just taking it out of expenses anyway. So, but I, I would assume she's back to work by now, right? Right, should have been. Well, we don't know that, right? We, we, we don't know. You know, okay. I mean, if you if you. If you poured through this data, you would figure out which weeks are in question here, or which weeks yeah. uh, the um, person stepping in was paid, and uh, then the, so the, you know the uh, the full time ACO is sixty four. Um, John, go ahead, John. If you recall, in the special town meeting, um, he had a a warrant for this money that we basically advised him to withdraw from that special town meeting and told him if he had an issue at the end of the year to do it as a line item transfer, which is what he's doing. 
I know the question that we had at that time was that, um, you know, paying basically somebody who's out of work, paying them full salary versus, and then also paying the person covering for the ACO. And I think we were told at that time that basically that's a selectman's decision to do that. Um, and, you know, the fact that he had a, a, a warrant for it on the special town meeting that he withdrew and we basically said, do it this way, do it as a line item transfer if you happen to run out, if you don't have the money. And obviously they didn't have the money. So, I mean, that's the way I recall it. Yeah, know? this was yeah. from last town meeting, right? That's it was when this issue came up. Special town meeting that we had right. when we did the water and sewer, you know, I forget when that was, that was in the fall sometime. So, yeah, I believe that recollection is accurate, Sean. So the additional information was the fact that they were, um, the Board of Selectmen authorized an additional amount of money in addition to what the person was collecting from workers' comp or, and, right. and that was why we voted not to support the article at that time, right? Yeah, Rick, Rick, I, Rick, I don't right. know if you know this. Are they still collecting workers' comp too as well? I, I don't know that. Oh, she, she's Fresh long. Man. She's long back to work. She went yeah, back I, to work. Okay. Yeah, I think I saw her driving in the neighborhood the other day. As a matter of fact. So this just probably represents the structural deficit that still exists within this line from last year. Just one issue. I I don't think um, I, I I agree with ninety percent what John said, but I think what happened was was we had the finance committee had so many questions, and it was last minute town meeting that it was Frank's decision to withdraw it and, and go for um, go for a line item uh, transfer. Uh, well, I, if I remember, it was actually, it was, I think it was, was a strong sense of support. Yeah, but I don't think it was our recommendation to do it. I, yeah, I think it was, it, it's, it's what Dave is saying. That's how I remember it. So the board, right. I remember the board voted not to accept this article. And we told Frank at the time that that's how we voted. And then, so Correct. in order to avoid a, you know, a conflict on town hall floor, Frank then uh, passed over it and said, as John said, that they would get addressed with a line item transfer at some point in the future. Right. I remember my vote on it. I don't remember the entire vote, but my vote was we didn't have enough. I abstained because I didn't have enough information. Right. And I think there were a lot of questions. So that's how I remember it. There wasn't a lot of information. Okay, um, is the board ready to vote on this line item transfer or would you like to get more information? I think the only information you're going to get is, is really where it ended last year was the fact that, you know, the Board of Selectmen's policy is to supplement the employee's wages uh, when they're collecting. Uh, and that was really where we were, where we had the most questions. So, I mean, uh, now, it's, now it's just a a line item I deficit see. that needs it, to be funded. I, I, I don't remember where the funding was last time, but I think the funding source was probably another reason we weren't, right. you know, ready to do it at town meeting, as opposed to it's coming out of their, the same budget. So I really don't have a problem with this. Right. I, well, the I'll, other I'll make, a motion. Was, I'll make yep. a motion to approve the uh, line item transfer. I'll second. So we have a motion in a second. Further discussion? Dave, did you want to add something? Yeah, I think the, the, the issue was, was that we asked whether or not the Board of Selectmen had a policy. Right. And Frank was unable to procure any type of written policy. And right. It, we that, were told that it was the policy, but we never received any backup to that effect. For me, correct. that was the issue that I had. Yeah, and me, me as well. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All right, we'll move to a vote, John. Yes. Al? No. Kathleen? Yes. Dave? No. Ralph? Yes. Scott? Yes. Rosemary? Abstain, I don't have any information. And Chuck? The same questions. Yes. Okay, and I'll vote yes. So as far as I can see, we have a uh, six two one. Is that is that what you have, Samantha? Samantha, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. Um, yes, I have that. 
Six two one. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We'll turn that in. Um, that moves us to uh, under old business subcommittee reports. Um, Capital committee. Dave, do you have a report for the committee? I do. Oh, good. So uh, at our last meeting, um, both Chief Grano and Ernie Sandlin of uh, Whitman Hampton Regional School District were in attendance. In regards to the warrant article uh, for firehouse uh, repairs and upgrades, um, Chief Grano explained that uh, the reason why that was not, that information was not included in the Collins report is because the, according to Chief Grano, the Collins report was only interested in vehicle capital costs when it came to the fire department. Uh, he did, he did ex go into uh, great detail in what this, uh, what he intends to use the money for. One is to uh, fix some 2000 uh, upgrades to 2000 renovations um, you know, this, this is an ongoing story that we, uh, theme that we hear is that there were steel doors in, installed incorrectly. So they're going to, they're going to fix those. Uh, the, uh, there's an ice machine that's on the same floor as apparatus. And, uh, they want to take that off. Uh, they want to take that. O OSHA says you, you shouldn't have the ice machine on the same floor as apparatus. The only place they, they can move that is to the, um, is to the hose tower. Uh, and in order to do that, you need to make some minor adjustments to the hose tower, you know, uh, create a floor, make a usable space, uh, make it, uh, there's some entryway door, broken latches, uh, steel railing, exterior steel railing is failing, concrete is failing. Uh, do, 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 uh, connect the EMS room to the new office. And uh, he's uh, got uh, estimates for that. So that uh, essentially he provided a really good breakout of what that money entails and uh, why the, uh, it was not included in the call center uh, matrix. Uh, Mr. Sandlin, um, he discussed the um, uh, generator um, warrant article two generators. So uh, what he originally re requested was a single generator that could be mobile and mobilized between two schools. Um, when we initially discussed that, some people in our committee said, hey, why don't we, instead of doing that, why don't we have two generators stable at, at, e at each school? Um, he thought that was a great idea time had spent, he had, he had, uh, uh, he was out of work for, for an extended period of time. So he, uh, didn't get as much information on getting that done as possible. What, what, what is thought is that the, uh, the $160,000 that's allocated for it now is, um, a, a good beginning and, uh, that there could be likely with further, um, study on it, you know, what, what kind of low capacity they need, other technical information that they need that they don't have at this moment, um, that he, it's, it's our committee's thought as well as Ernie's thought is that there's probably going to be additional funds necessary to complete these, this project. Um, but it, everyone on the committee was, was uh, unanimous on the thought that um, it's, it's a great time, it's a good time to get this done now uh, because uh, if, if we, if, if this doesn't go forward, the thought is that uh, it's going to get lost in the queue and, and, and take years to come back. Um, yeah, a lot of technical, he, he was very technical in, in regards to uh, what, what, what more information he needs. So um, his original estimate was for one mobile, this new estimate is for uh, two stationary. And the thought is that uh, the two stationary, um, instead of going with the, the cheapest brand, they, they, they want to go with reliable, you know, maybe not the Cadillac, but, but at least a reliable uh, type uh, generator that will uh, work uh, for the, what they need uh, at both schools and um, anticipate uh, potential future funds to, to close out that project. And that's it.
Hey, uh, Al, you have a question for Dave? Yeah, just a couple of questions. Uh, these uh, generators, um, is it stationary at the school system itself? Well, there, there are none. So uh, at, well, there's one at Whitman Middle, so there's none at Conley and um, Duval. So when a power outage goes out, they risk, they risk yeah. losing uh, perishables. They risk losing computer uh, electronic type stuff because when okay. uh, power goes on and off, that wreaks havoc on elect electronics. So it, it's happened to them so, in the past. Yeah. And they're, they're trying to, so, so the question is, you know, when you bring a generator into a building, okay, the question is, okay, when, a, when power goes out, what do I want to put on this generator? And that determines what size generator that you need. And then that, that also determines what size switch you need. And, and right. so the more you want to put on, the bigger generator, the bigger the switch. He's trying to figure. He's trying to figure out what the most reasonable thing to do there is. The, qu the question I'd have too, at Dave, is the, the only time I really I've lived next to Conley the past twenty years is the only time we lose power is when it's either basketball after six o'clock in the evening, and uh, not during the day. Uh, is it after hours during storms when the schools are already canceled? I don't know. Well, that's the thing. Is you know, yeah, I mean. Power outages cause cause a school cancellation, but that yeah, that's just bring this up, you know. Yeah, so that's just one issue. The other issue is is electronics and perishables. Yeah, and you brought up too about the uh, the previous comment before about the uh, the the previous comment you brought before the generators, which was what? Which uh, what previous? The, the floor of the hose tower. Is that what you wanted to talk about? No, there's no oh, generators. No, just the generators itself too, as well. You brought up uh, a conversation prior to that too. Oh, so so this this warrant article originally came in as one mobile generator between two schools, and Ernie thought right. that was that Ernie thought that was a a good way to uh, a least expensive less expensive way to uh, manage power outages. Uh, but then you know as discussions went on, um, our committee was like, "Geez, that that seems." it's a good idea to save money and, and do things, you know, in steps, but it just makes sense to take it, take a step and ma make them both stationary instead of one mo mo mobile generator. Now we have, Dave, we have prices on that Dave. Sorry. Well, well, that's the thing. So he, he got initial prices on a mobile. Yeah. So now w with it being too stationary, he, he was out for an extended period of time uh, and, and he's just recently getting back. So, um, he uh you know most vendors won't give you an estimate unless you well obviously if you t you need to tell them what you need so then they can spec it out and, and say okay well it's going to cost this amount of dollars unless you have that money allocated and they know that it's, you have money allocated they, they don't want to give an estimate just for the sake of giving it a given an estimate so he thinks that once this money is allocated that he'll have the ability to tell these vendors hey I, I had the money allocated. We're ready. To, we're ready to move forward. You know, give, give me your competitive bid, and he'll obviously he'll so, get multiple bids. So if we allocate ten thousand dollars, he's definitely interested, right? For both schools. Well, the, well, the, I think the the the, the probably word, looking more like three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I was gonna say. I get, get it. You I get, get it, there, Scott. I get it. I get it. But I, you know, one hundred and sixty right now. Um, yeah, Some people, sure. A lot of people seem to think that it's uh, 160 might be very close to 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 getting us there, but yeah. um, you know, I, yeah. I, th I think I think a few ten thousand dollars, a couple a couple tens of thousands of dollars more, we'll, we'll probably get it over the finish line. No, do, do we have recent conversations of what we've actually lost for the both schools combined to buy something like this? I mean, I'd rather go with that and say, say, look, we lost a half million dollars of the food or uh, computer software the past uh, ten years. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I mean, it's, you know, right. it's, you know, when you, when you think right. about it, it just, it makes sense just in a safety aspect. You don't have, you don't have workers working at, 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 during a storm trying to save everything. They're not going to save it. You have a generator keeping the building alive. They're not going to save it. So did they give an idea? Um, did they give an idea that why they would want one? Do we generally have one school go out not the other or is it both school what's yeah he, he did mention that uh i think is i think he said Duval does go uh does lose power more frequently than conley yep. um 
and and that that was his thought process. He's like, okay, well, sometimes they don't both they both don't lose prop uh, uh, electricity. Maybe I can deal with one. But you know, you know, more conversations that we had, it's like, okay, well, instead of having someone you know workers on the road during during an emergency, getting this thing back and forth uh, uh, to both schools. Why not just why not just spend more money in in, in a safety uh, manner? Kathleen, did you have a question? Uh, it relates to these uh, two articles. That one is Article Twenty Four, and the other is Twenty Six. Dave, did you touch on Article Twenty Five, the sidewalk repairs? Because yeah. that wasn't resolved by us yet. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so um, again, uh, the, the the theme that I uh, that we all hear is that he, he thinks that the contractor in the past did not properly compact uh, the sidewalks before pouring them. And therefore, um, therefore they didn't last and you get, you get some heaving, cracking um, in uh, 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 heaving, cracking and damage. Um, you know, so, so my question to him was, you know, uh, what you know how much money would it take to have an expert out there on our behalf a, a, an owner's rep and it's you know for this particular job you know for any job it's, it's at least 10 percent of a job so you know you, you could add three thousand dollars more onto that job just to have someone uh out there uh overseeing things plus then plus uh you know if they want to take some type of compaction samples things like that you know you're talking th thousands of dollars for for a fairly low budgeted uh, project. Uh, Justin Evans mentioned that there's a, uh, is a, uh, a piece of equipment that the, uh, a uh, dynamic cone petrometer that they could use. Basically you just drop it into the ground, take some measurements and see if compaction is right. That, that seems like a, a, Ernie's going to look into renting that and seeing if um, their guys can over, you know, make sure that compaction is right. So they don't have to. Yeah, they, what are we actually talking about? Sidewalk? Yeah, Sorry. Sidewalks. Did, did he did he say where? Because like I, I walk to Conley all the time and the sidewalks look fine to me. I don't see there's any issues with sidewalks at Conley. I mean, yeah, I go down that middle school, they're horrible on going from like Corthell Ave up to the school. I'll agree with you. I'll agree with you, John. Yeah, it was it was most mostly the middle Terrible. school. Most of the middle school that uh, that these issues are, are happening at. All right. Okay, any other questions for Dave? All right, Dave, thank you for that report. Um, I'm sure we're, we're going to see your recommendations as we move through the warrant. So that brings us to... Um, Do we want to vote on those? Do we want to actually vote on those three? Right well, I now? think we could just go through the warrant to get to them and look at the recommendations are in the warrant now. So all of the building facilities capital expenditure committee recommendations are in the warrant articles now. So okay. The copy that you received last has been updated to reflect the, the vote of the capital committee. So if the board would like, we'll move right back into the warrant. Uh, everybody have a copy of it? Yep. <clears throat> So John, where can we are we? I John. can. I Thank think you. I can. I actually have the PDF that's the signed one, so I will see if I can put that up. Thank you. That should be the one that everybody got. Yeah. The last right. Email. Exactly. Yep. All right. So we're going to move to P five, where we. Sorry, I was just. Okay. So P5, uh, the language has changed since we voted this article. Um, it's just a little bit more involved. Uh, but we have made a recommendation on Article P5. So, so we'll move on. Uh, that is the new language. Does anybody have any questions about the way that the article is now written? It basically says the same thing that we voted on, but it is definitely in a much more uh, 
Was that a, a result of town council looking at it or something I, that changed? I it? would certainly assume so, yeah. Certainly looks like it. <laughs> well, we we also um I think they got the details of the borrowing and and you know when we originally discussed it, we didn't really know much about what the details of the borrowing were. And I think a lot of this is kind of just covering that uh, that the school has to be involved in handling the borrowing and all of that. So I'm sure the lawyer did have a lot to say about it. So the way we left this one was um, our original vote on this article, P5, was a 7-0 vote. And that's the way it was written in the warrant that we reviewed during our last meeting. However, that didn't make it through to the copy of this warrant. So I would just, I'll just give Frank an update that he needs to put the recommendation back in uh, to this article P5 as a 7-0 vote of the Finance Committee to recommend. Is everybody in agreement with that? Yep. Okay. All right, so that moves us to uh, Article Article Two. Uh, as you move through the warrant, uh, obviously that's a um, separate document and uh, additional actions that are going to take place for that Article Two, and we'll probably begin that process tonight. I would assume. That brings us to uh, Article uh, Six was the last one we uh, we haven't recommended this one because we are going to make a recommendation on the town hall floor, which this article does say because uh, we don't really have the financial implications uh, of this fully to make a recommendation at this point. Was that why we tabled this? Yes. To your recollection, okay. Hmm. Which brings us to uh, Article 7. Article 7, to see if the town will vote to accept and approve the proposed amendment to the 1991 Regional Agreement of the Whitman Hanson Regional School District, the district, which has been submitted to the Board of Selectmen by the District School Committee, as it may be amended up until the date of town meeting, a copy of the current versions on file at the town clerk's office, as well as being posted online. The proposed amendment provided, however, that this vote of the town to accept and approve the proposed amendment shall be subject to and contingent upon the satisfaction of the following conditions. One, the town of Hanson, as the other member town of the district, shall, by vote of annual or special town meeting held on or before September 30th, 2020, accept and approve the proposed amendment. And two, the town of Hanson, as the other member town of the district, shall by vote of annual or special town meeting held on or before September 30th, 2020, approve the fiscal year 2021 budget adopted by the school committee for the district, as voted at the school committee's meeting held on May 18th, 2020, which approval may be by the appropriation of sufficient funds to pay the certified assessment from the district to the town of Hanson in connection with such fiscal year 2021 school budget or take any other action relative thereto. So where we left off on article seven was the fact that we were going to do some listening. And uh, is anybody still in the listening phase or are we ready to move on a recommendation? I haven't heard anything. We haven't heard anything from Hanson. What are we listening to? They haven't had a finance committee meeting. They haven't shown us their numbers to prove that they can't afford full statutory or to follow the law. What are we listening to? Well, the other thing I was listening to was the uh, board of uh, selectmen in Whitman's meeting where a discussion was about our financial condition looking into uh, next year and the fact that we're likely going to be looking at an override. So. I think that should be part of the listening and it should be part of the education to the town. Um, and as we deliberate on this article to uh, uh, look to consider um, a hybrid method of assessment, I think that should be part of the, you know, part of the equation. So uh, does anybody else have anything they want to add, John? Yeah, I think, um 
in my opinion, the people we need to be listening to or the committee we need to be listening to is the Whitman Hanson Regional School District. Um, currently right now, what's in front of us um, is not a decision based on statutory or, uh, or any other means of assessment. It's looking at the, what the school committee has proposed for a budget and what the results will be if that budget fails. Um, I think most of us listened to the last school committee meeting uh, where they said that if they go, when they go to a 112 budget on July 1st, um, they have until August 1st, until when they start to have to pay the teachers for the fiscal 2021 um, school year, because that's when they start, they start school in August. So if the amendments, if this amendment fails in either town, if the school, if the school budget fails in either town, and also if the override fails in Hanson, the school committee will still be, uh, or the schools will be on a 112 budget on August 1st. If that happens, 39 teachers are gonna get laid off. That's pretty much a fact. Um, the superintendent uh, outlined that very clearly, not only to the school committee, he sent out a video to the teachers, he sent out an email to um, all the people in the district, basically outlining that um, if these, this amendment fails, if the budget fails, 39 teachers are gonna get laid off. So I think what we're looking at here is not necessarily a discussion about assessment method, it's a discussion about do we support the schools or not? Because yeah, we, I, I, if, I just, oh, I, excuse me, excuse, can I finish? Um, because if, if, if we vote uh, in, in either in Article 7 here and also in, if we're, if we're voting not to support the schools, then th th I mean, that's what we're doing. That's what us not voting in favor of this, we're voting basically that it's okay with us to lay off 39 teachers. And, Excuse and me. personally, I don't think that's a great decision on our part. Go ahead. Excuse me. Go Thank ahead, you. Rosemary. I heavily disagree that we are not supporting the schools by, I would, I, if we vote to do anything that doesn't keep Whitman's chapter 70 in Whitman, we vote to undermine chapter 70 protections, financial protections for the town. I wanna to remind everybody on this board that we are a finance committee. Um, we are, we determine how much it costs to effectively pay for children and we pay that amount. We don't pay for another town's portion of that. We are an effective finance committee. It is not our doing that the schools would be underfunded and we can't respond. We are not regionalized financially. We can't, we have to responsibly handle people's finances. We handle a whole entire town, not just a school. We have to responsibly fund to the demographics in town. Chapter 70 is allocated for a reason. It is so that we can afford education. We are, we are paying within the, the, between the 25 and uh, 30 percentile above minimal contribution. We are, we are, we're offering to fund this responsibly to then go fund more of this is not responsible financially. And I am on a finance committee in Whitman. I am not on a school committee. I can understand why they would push that out of, to have a budget. But when it comes to us, I think we need to respond financially because that is our charge. John, I just, just before I get to you, Chuck, I just want to say, uh, I respect your opinion, John, but I thoroughly disagree with your assessment that this is not a vote for the schools. The town of Whitman has supported the Whitman Hanson Regional School District throughout the years. This is an issue of where we are knowingly diverting Whitman taxpayers' money to the town of Hanson. And we have done this for the past several years, not knowing. And for us to do it again is not a responsible way that we should be protecting the assets of the town. And that is our charge. So it, it's obviously an emotional issue. And, you know, for whatever reason, you know, you have an opinion, that's great. But I think um, 
what we have is an opportunity here to say that the Whitman taxpayer's money should be spent on our assessment, not on Hanson's assessment. That's my opinion, but I'm gonna open it up to the, to the rest of the board. Anybody else wants to chime in? I just have one quick correction to make. It was um, stated in uh, television uh, interviews with two selectmen that it was known in 2017. So they allowed $1.4 million to be diverted knowingly. So it was not not known um, last year. So this is not true that nobody knew. Um, it was also stated that both town accountants knew every single year because an article was sent to them. Accountants have fiduciary duties. So um, it would be a hard press to say the accountants told nobody because that would really be a liability for them. So this idea that's been going on has to, the, the gaslighting has to stop. They both yeah. knew and Hanson's Head of finance is Kevin Sullivan. He is on the state finance committee. He puts out the finance committee handbook and which tells you that this is not the way to financially do it, that you have to do it on a wealth-based aggregate model. So if, if Hanson went knowingly and spent money that was not legal in departments to grow departments, this is a financial mistake and the taxpayers and voters of Hanson have to take a good look at how they're being, how their staff, you know, people they vote in and uh, appoint are handling their money. This is not, this is where we, what is it? What was it? Scope creep? I think that was used once. Little scope creep. We are not right. responsible. Chuck, you had a comment and then Dave. Uh, yeah, yeah, my comments. Um, you know, I'm, I'm torn right now. Um, John, you make a good point, and my, I, I feel for that, but uh, Rosemary and Dave, you know, you guys are correct. We have a finance committee, and I think that, um, you know, we, we need to really focus on finances. It's up to the, uh, some of the other committees and department heads and select people to make sure that uh, they can, you know, operate the schools with the proper funding from each town. Um, I've been on this committee for six years now, I think. And, you know, six years ago, the former uh, chairman of the committee told the selectmen that, uh, you know, the black, the last time we were able to balance a budget without um, finagling around and, and moving money, he told them the black clouds were building. Uh, he told them that things weren't going to get any better. It was going to be challenging. And each year I've been on this committee towards the end of the process, um, as we work in one direction, it seems that we wind up going in a different direction for um, other people, some of the select uh, selectmen officials, some of the administrators. It just seems like we go one way and then all of a sudden we stop and we, we have to turn and go somewhere else. I think there are hard decisions to be made. I don't think they've been made lately. Um, this, this money, this Chapter 70 money being a big one uh, is definitely something we are way overpaid and that money um, you know, belongs, you know, to the town of Whitman. And, you know, we, we, it's, it's a tough town. We don't have a lot of revenue. Um, one way, you know, we, we talked about trying to, um, I think it was, you know, like a reset where we were talking about possible overrides. And I think we were hoping to uh, maybe have a reset on some salaries and contracts. But, it, you know, it seems like, again, you know, we're building a budget now in the last couple of weeks. We're, build, we're working on a budget based on what other, the other towns are doing. We're building our budget because of what Hanson's doing because their, their town um, workers are getting cold. I just, I just don't think the, the hard decisions are being made properly right now. And I couldn't even support a two and a half override next year because I don't feel that we're making the right decisions now as it is. Uh, so I just needed to say that. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Dave? Yeah, um, I'm just going to say it again, you know, uh, um, uh, the superintendent is, uh, I think, uh, probably the hardest job out there. He came into a bee's nest uh, due to the actions of the school committee prior to his hiring, or, or the inactions of the school committee prior to his hiring. And um, he's done a really good job at trying to figure out the best way uh, to move forward. 
and uh, it seems reasonable. Um, but uh, I, I, I do want to clarify one thing is, is uh, uh, someone on this board wanted to drag in the, uh, the, uh, the accountants from uh, the two towns as being responsible when it was the former Whitman Hanson Regional School District business manager who checked the statutory box. So, you know, you know fool us once uh, on that issue. Uh, so I don't think I don't think you really can say that it was the uh, town accountant's pro, uh, 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 response, uh, reason for, for this, the place we're in right now in, in regards to the assessment. Uh, but like Chuck, I, I'm torn. Um, you know, like I said, uh, Superintendent Simonek has done a great job. It seems reasonable, but um, uh, I've 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 discussed this particular issue with numerous people throughout the town and uh, uh, very few of them when they understand the issues at hand are willing to uh, um, have 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 uh, how do I say this fear very few of them have open uh, taken a, a, a positive thought toward um, you know subsidizing Hanson one more year. Um, so I'm still on the fence on, on, on how I'm gonna vote, but I just do wanna let you know that I, I've speak, spoken to a lot of people in town and um, they're pretty uh, livid uh, in regards to how this situation has gotten to this point and um, you know, haven't really uh, opened up to the idea of uh, uh, subsidizing Hanson one more year. I just. I just want to comment because what what was said about the accountant was said about that in a television interview through Carl Kowalski. He said that it always came in. The accountants have gotten the breakdown every year by the town. So just so you know that it, it was said by a selectman, and I'm repeating it. All right. So Kathleen, you had a comment. Uh, I do, and I think we all are torn in that. We want to make sure that the children of Whitman and Hanson receive the proper education. And uh, so I, I absolutely support the $55,320,238 budget that uh, is needed to educate the children. However, we know nothing about Hanson's fiscal 21 budget. We don't know that they can't afford the full statutory. Uh, the fact that they don't want the full statutory is not the same as we can't afford it. Whitman took $800,000 from capital stabilization two years ago to fund Whitman's assessments. We wouldn't have had to have done that had we been going full statutory. We don't know what kind of free cash capital items uh, Hansen is planning to do in fiscal 21 because they don't meet. They don't have public meetings. They don't post any minutes. They are keeping everything about the Hanson finances uh, secret, not just to us in Whitman, but I believe that the people in Hanson don't even know their financial situation. So I am in no mood to give $570,000 of Whitman taxpayers money to Hanson to fund them one more year to prevent them from going full statutory. Like the, yeah, yeah. You know, the fact that we didn't know, or we didn't understand what we were voting for, no one told us what statutory meant, that's baloney. They just didn't pay attention and they did, just didn't do the arithmetic. So I, you know, I have grandchildren in the system. I want them to be educated and I support the budget and I appreciate the school committee finally both voting the budget out of committee and putting it where it belongs in the hands of the finance committees. We meet pretty much every week, about time for Hanson to have a meeting and tell us what they're thinking, how they're planning on spending Hanson's taxpayers' money. So um, I think it's pretty clear how I feel on Article 7. Okay, is there anybody else that we haven't heard from that would like to speak first? And then I'll get back to you, John. Okay, John. Um, honestly, I agree with all of you and everything that you said. The issue we have here now is that th th that discussion time has passed. What we have in front of us is a budget from the school uh, and, and an amendment on how that budget is going uh, is to be assessed to the towns. Um, if 
those, if the amendment doesn't pass and the amount doesn't pass, the school doesn't have a budget on August 1st, 39 teachers are laid off. So we can have this argument all we want, this discussion all we want, but the fact of the matter remains is that if this doesn't pass, uh, our town meeting, the, uh, Article 7, if the amount doesn't pass in the budget and the same thing happens in Hanson, those teachers are going to be laid off. And that's... Go ahead. I, just a question. I don't know if that's true. It's a question. Is, a, a, is it an ultimatum or is it... Uh... It's not an ultimatum. It's just the, it, the right. decision that we have to right. make now, that's the result of our decision. Our it, decision it, it now. Is, the topic isn't about the statutory method anymore. The right. topic is about uh, the what the school has presented to us as a budget and as, a, uh, as an assessment method. And if we decide that we're not going to support it, that's why we... We absolutely you say support. Have. All right. Where's, where's, what is Hanson coming from? Hold play? on, Al. Just one uh, second. Not, All right, go ahead. Let me just see if I can clarify a little bit because this board, our charge here is to vote our recommendations to town meeting. If this board votes not to uh, recommend Article 7, we're not giving up on the schools. We're telling the school committee that they need to reassess their commitment not to use the statutory method. And I think it's important for this committee then to set the budget. If the budget is statutory, that would set our, our line item for the Women Hanson Regional School District assessment at 15,156,235. That would be our assessment if the statutory method is used. That's not so correct. I'm not, I'm, That's I'm not just, correct. I'm just confused about how you're saying, John. If the statutory method is used under this new budget, our assessment would be 14,796,475 because that's the new assessment under the new budget when the 15 million one is the old budget before Whitman Hansen kicked in 600,000 to bring it down. So the 15 one is no longer in play anymore. What we're looking at now is uh, a, a, a statutory number on this current budget for us would be 14,796,475 or two, a 2.8% 2 increase from last year. So, so John, okay. this finance committee could recommend any number in that line item. Correct. Uh -huh. And the number that was given at that meeting, we just talked about the meeting that was right before our meeting, came out that if the statutory method was used, that would be our assessment, 15,156. 235, I wrote it down because I wanted to know what our assessment is if in fact we use the correct method of assessment. I made sure yes. I wrote down the number because that is a number that I would like to see in our line item in article two. And that's the number that we have been carrying to show our commitment to the Women Hanson Regional School District. That we support education. I think you're oversimplifying it by saying if we do not support Article 7, that this catastrophic event is going to happen. There are other things that come into play here. It's not a this or nothing or 48 layoffs. That's the, not the case. The problem there are is other scenarios that would play out. Excuse me. Excuse me. It is a misnomer. It is a choice of the school committee. I mean, of the uh, superintendent to lay those teachers off. You could also switch the beginning date, I believe, to September 1st, and then you could have September 1st being the first time that you have to do it. There's uh, things that he could do. That, that, so it just feels like a scare tactic that will perpetuate the underfunding of schools. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. If we continue to um, just have Whitman pay in, in, a, in an accountable way, and not Hanson, then we'll always be missing that amount of money that should be going to schools. And we will never get the full value of what we pay. We are paying responsibly. We're asking our partners to pay responsibly. These kids deserve an education. Now, I, I want to say that Jeff can make decisions like furloughing uh, large amounts of money and, and, and jobs that aren't teachers. So this becomes Jeff's decision. And I hope he makes better ones than I've seen. And that's it. 
I don't think that we should be using this whole, if you don't do this, I'll rip teachers out idea. There are things he can do. Well, and I think it's unfair to say like, that it's either, you know, if you vote, if you vote not to support Article 7, you're voting not to support the schools. I think that's a, a horrible oversimplification with all due respect, John. I understand where the information came from. I understand why the information was put out there, but I don't think that is a responsible way we should address Article 7. And I don't think it's using our fiscal responsibility as finance committee members to oversimplify the effects of Article 7 to our financial obligations for this year and next year and five years down the road because we are facing some significant financial difficult decisions in the next few years that are not going to be helped by diverting a sum of money to a neighboring town. So, like I said, I respect your opinion. I understand why you have chosen the direction that you have, but I think the bigger picture is our financial responsibility as a finance committee. So, Chuck. And in the end, we are just making a recommendation. It is actually town meeting that will make the ultimate vote. They could still support that. That's correct. Article 7, correct? Correct. Uh, anybody else want to chime in? I, I, I would, uh, we're one meeting away from completing our recommendations for town meeting. I don't think we should pass over this article. No, I don't know. I'm, What's I'm, the vote, the will I'm, of the committee? I'm inclined to say that, um, you know, as much as I, as I, as I do agree with John um, in a lot of this, but the fact is, is at some point a line has to be drawn in the sand and, you know, enough is enough. And I do have to, to agree that we, if we're going to be possibly asking our own taxpayers in Whitman for an override next year. Yeah. Um, you know, we better have shown them that we were very responsible in the year leading up to that. And that might be making some tough choices. I'd hate to see 30 something teachers get laid off. I'd hate to see three teachers get laid off. But again, I, I also know that, um, no, you know, not knowing what they're planning on doing with all of their free cash and stabilization money in um, Hanson, uh, you know, this might be a good time for them to consider using some of that. Does anybody else want to speak on this or before we take a vote? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. John. Well, have we had, do we have a motion yet? I'll make a motion to accept Article 7. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? We got to have a second to vote on it, everybody. I'll, I'll second the purpose of voting, Kathleen. <laughs> okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Uh, Rick, just to be clear, um, yes. a vote uh, for, a, a yes vote basically says uh, we would want the modified statutory method and a no vote would be regular statutory, correct? That is correct. A no vote would be that we don't recommend Article 7 to the taxpayers at town meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other question? John. Yes. Al. No. Kathleen. No. Dave. No. Ralph. Ralph. Uh -oh. yes. Ralph. So yes. we're voting on Article 7. Yes. And a, a yes vote means that you would recommend a, a modified um, assessment method, a no vote was, would mean that you would not recommend Article 7 and a, um, a hybrid method for the assessment. Do you understand? The, what's that? I'll go with a yes vote. So that's 500,000 over to Hanson. You understand? Ralph, do you is? realize that your Ralph. yes vote no, means no, you're no, recommending no, no. Article 7? Yeah, that's what I think you're, yeah. What did you say, Ralph? I misread it. I'd rather see the 500 stay in Whitman. Okay, okay so that's what I, so you you so you're not recommending Article Seven. That's that's what we're trying to yes, ascertain. I, 
No on Article 7. We keep Very out good. 500. Thank you, Ralph. Scott? No. Rosemary? No. Chuck? Uh, no. And I vote no. And that's 1-8. Uh, is that correct? Samantha, is that the way you got the vote? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. We're moving on. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, obviously, a lot, a lot to consider here. So I appreciate everybody's comments. Um, so Article 7 is done. John, I think our next uh, Article 8 was uh, a floor vote. Just move to Article 16 on the new warrant, if you would. All right. I think we've gone all through everything. We were at 16. Uh, 16. 16, we actually voted, but we, in this, if you go, go back, we've gone right. too far, 16. So right here, it's the, um, uh, the vote for the police um, capital item. Uh, 15, oh, the numbers have changed now, so that's where I'm looking at. I don't think so, have it? Okay, Article 15, last, uh, Article 16. Okay, so so we did vote Article 16 last week, 8-0. It's not indicated here. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, so if you recall, we changed the funding source uh, on Article 16 from free cash to reserve for appropriation motor vehicle fine. So it now has the correct funding source, but our vote 8-0 is not reflected in that warrant. That's all. Does anybody remember that any other way? No. That's what I have in my notes. That's all I'm saying. So we, we've already acted on 16. I just wanted to draw your attention that it's not written in the warrant that way. So the next one I think is Article 21. So we didn't vote on this article because uh, there were several members of the committee who requested some additional information from the DPW superintendent. I did forward an email from Bruce Martin. Uh, did anybody not receive it? Um, I don't think I did, Rick. I didn't see it. I didn't, I didn't see it. Okay, so I'll read it to you. It's very brief. Um, I apologize. I thought I forwarded it. He, uh, on June 3rd, he sent an email to uh, respond to uh, Rosemary and CC me on the unaccepted roads. Um, so good morning, Rosemary. Here is a list of unaccepted roads. One, Captain Allen Way. The town still holds a bond for this street and the water and sewer division is currently working with the developer on a few small issues. Two, Railroad Ave. We may have acceptable as built plans. Number three, Old, Con Old Conley Estates. Number four, Fieldstone Circle. Number five, Fox Way. Number six, Henning Drive. We may have acceptable as-built plans. He writes for that street. Number seven, Jacob Lane. Number eight, John Young Way. Number nine, Mere Farm. Number 10, Valley Road. Number 11, Victoria Road. Number 12, Wild Turkey. Number 13, Rosina Way. Um, so then the email concludes uh, 14, Robin and Terry Road. We may have acceptable as built plans for that, he says. So he goes on to say, this list does not include roads currently under construction or nearly completed that should be submitted at next year's town meeting. All roads not noted have been unable, I have una been able to, unable to find plans, acceptable plans for. Please let me know if you have questions. So at the conclusion of our meeting last two weeks ago, I did contact him by phone. He did go into great detail about the um, process for getting roads accepted and the implications to the chapter 90 are definitely affected by the fact that these roads aren't accepted those particular 14 roads, and if there are others, obviously under construction that he mentions. So in the conversation, which I had asked him to detail in an email, but he didn't really get into the whole process. 
but he, in a nutshell, said that the process for developers to go through and get roads accepted has not been followed. There has been, uh, there has been not an overall compliance, and as a result, these roads are not calculated into Whitman's total roads, which does affect our Chapter 90 distribution. He did say that the cost associated with uh, going back to get roads that have been established, I'll use Railroad Ave for an example. Railroad Ave is a street off of my street that has been there for the, since I came in 1977. So now at this point, the DPW is plowing these roads because these are taxpayers that are living on them now. And Al, your question specifically was, what is the financial implications yeah. for the taxpayer yeah. on, on the town maintaining unaccepted roads? It's significant. Right. So it, it, this is something that it, it doesn't just uh, deserve a, an aside or, a, you know, we already talked about it. This is something that Bruce Martin, the DPW superintendent, has committed to following up on with um, the DPW uh, commissioners. So they are actively pursuing getting these roads accepted, but with the notation that the cost associated with some of the processes would exceed any financial benefit that the town would get by the inclusion of these roads um, for uh, Chapter 90 reimbursement. So he was very candid about the process and the, the I guess the, the fact that it hasn't been followed as it should have been in the past yeah um, but it that is where we are if you wanted an update he was very uh, candid about providing that particular background so, my like question, I, said, I apologize my for not forwarding the email but it didn't have that kind of detail in it anyway so that questions we were looking for i didn't think so it was a question from rosemary and al rosemary go ahead it was more a statement um i got that email and i can note that it's missing some roads and um so I decided to just, so I, I ran across these numbers. I look at state numbers. I come, I look backwards at information. Unlike, you know, some people start from the bottom up, I start from the top down. Um, and the numbers that I'm seeing from DOR show me that there's some abnormal numbers, amounts in this, uh, this area. So I, I think it needs a really deep dive and I think it needs a, not just so we can't, I, we need exact numbers, how much it would cost, you know, how many absolute roads we aren't receiving chapter 90 from all of the reasons, a real thorough look, because I'm, I'm seeing that it's probably way more money than that's being represented. And I want to remind everybody when I first saw that, saw that there was problem with the state aid, I said, this is bigger than you think. And it was, I'm very good at looking at big numbers and assessing where there's problems. I'm, I'm concerned about this. Okay, Al? Now, who's responsible for it, Rick? Well, there the, actually, the, and the Bruce went on to say that the process involves quite a few yeah. people. The process actually involves uh, uh, the bond, um, the, the, okay. it goes before the planning board, it goes to the clerk's office, it goes through a lot of steps. In order for the developer to get his bond back, yes. this is supposed to be the final step before who releases it, Rick? Who releases the bond? Who releases the bond is a responsible person. Right, right. So that's the end of the chain. So, like right. I said, the chain, the chain is broken. Uh, all I want to say is the oh, chain. You is don't broken. have a town planner. Doesn't matter, but someone signs but that, off. On so it. typically, I agree with that. A town planner. One at a time, please. Typically, in house, it would be the town planner's responsibility to follow yeah. through on the completion of the subdivision, they would yeah. hold the hand of the developer as the developer goes through the process of planning board hearing, a selectman hearing, and then a town meeting acceptance. And they would work with the engineer and the, and the reviewing engineer to make sure everything was done properly. You don't have a town planner. Um, I, my guess is on some of these subdivisions, maybe they hire outdoor engineering firm to oversee it, maybe they don't. I, I they do. They didn't on my project. We need to know that though, but somebody's gonna sign off on that. I right. agree. I don't know what their mechanism no. is. I don't know what. I mean, I, I, I've worked in the contracting business a long yeah, time. 
So I think the, the, the thing is that we've identified that, you know, there's a, there's a problem. And I think, uh, you know, we should be talking to the DPW Board of Commissioners to find out how they would move forward to get it corrected. See, I don't think that that's where you, your answer is actually talking to Frank and, and, and it's so you need somebody in house on our end. It isn't the it's DPW. Not going anywhere with Frank. It's not, it's not really the DPW their is not the thing. Issue. They end up with it at the end of the day, right, but it's yeah. not their responsibility from point A to that point. All right. So, so I think it's important that this committee falls up on it. I think it's an, it's a financial issue. It's an issue yeah. that needs to have further study. I think the, the fact that the, 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 the problem was identified is the first best step. As we address this warrant article, it was a question. I think the answer was an eye opener for me anyway, that yeah. the problem still exists and, the, and it's going to take some time to correct. But it did seem that Bruce Martin, who's on the front lines and part of the chain, is committed to, to affecting change and getting. Let's just say one thing, Rick. It's not Bruce Martin's issue. He's just yeah. doing. He's just doing. What he's doing to take care of the roads, keep them clear for the ambulance and fire department. It's a long overdue process that needs to be resolved. We're lacking uh, chapter ninety funds that need to be resolved. All right? right, we need to figure that out. Forest Street okay. needs to be, was paid about fifteen years ago. It needs to be paved over again. I want speed bumps out here. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, so we need to follow it up um, with um, you know. As I, I your road easy paved, Dave, right? Right, Dave? <laughs> yeah. as, as far as the article goes, I don't think that this, he's just, um, uh, Mr. Martin has just received uh, a grant, and I believe the monies from this article are to um, help subsidize it. So I think we're going to be paying um, 100000 but getting, I think, $300,000 worth for the resurfacing. So he's gotten a good amount. It has nothing to do with him, but these actions affect his funding. So right, um, I think it was. I think it was a perfect opportunity to start the discussion. The warrant article, you're right, has little to do because this is a this is an article that's talking about supplemental funds to pave long overdue paving projects in the town of Whitman. So, um, yes. but I think the discussion has started. Chuck, did you want to add something? Yeah, um, yeah. Like you just said, that article is basically that's for the for a lot of the. The, the taxpayers that'll be happy to see some of the roads repaired. Uh, so it's a great, uh, you know, it's great for us to recommend some extra money being kicked in. But I will say that uh, this, this is uh, very concerning. Some of those streets that you named off, I know I was looking at uh, moving down, you know, 21 years ago, Jacob Lane, Henning Drive. Um, it just, just seems concerning. And it, it uh, hopefully we can open it up and, and, and fix it and, if it results in more chapter money, chapter 90 money, all right. the better. I Thank have you. a, I have a call in with um, Mr. Sullivan over at um, DOT uh, for our district five, um, the finance over there to see uh, how many roads are and how much we're getting and how that process goes. So we'll start that process. Chuck, I asked you to help me a little bit. Uh, we'll be working on that a little. Yeah, so if you guys up. can keep the committee updated as you find out information, that'd be great. If you Thank want you. to follow it up with anybody else, we'll certainly, you know, I mean, I'll, get them into I'll the gather the information and Chuck can put it together and, and present it. I think, you know, help. we'll work right. as a team, but he's sort of the head of that. So, Chuck, is that all right with yep. you? Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks. Anybody else? Any other comments on this article? So the article as written. Um, well, to see if the town will vote to appropriate $100,000 from free cash for the purpose of resurfacing and or installing surface treatments and line painting to various town streets or take any other action relative thereto. Uh, so it was proposed by the Public Works Commissioners and the Capital Committee does recommend this article. Um, so further discussion? Uh, Just a real quick question. A Just a real quick question. What roads were they again, Rick? I'll send you the email. Yeah. There are quite a few. Yeah. There's 14 roads. Right. But there's yeah. more than that road. That the problem yeah. is those are He those did say there was roads. more. There's he did say there was more that are under construction. I apologize. Yeah. I'll get this I'll put it over here in my to-do pile. And I'll send um, that email tomorrow. I'll so make I'll, a, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll Jack. make a motion to accept Article 21. All right, we Chuck have a motion. Second. Chuck second. Wait a second. Okay. Uh, vote, John. Yes. L. No. 
Kathleen. Yes. Dave. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Scott. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. Uh, Chuck. Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, eight one zero. Okay, moving to Article 24, I believe. Uh, does anybody see anything else that we missed? So Article 24 was one of the ones that Dave just um, gave a report on. Um, so this is a very specific uh, totals. Uh, to see if the town will vote to transfer $57,000 from free cash to make the following repairs slash improvements to the fire station. And it's listed by task project and estimated cost. Repair hose tower and convert to office space, 29,000. Repair concrete entryway, replace entry door and latches, 17,000. Relocate ice machine, 1,000. Interior painting of building, 10,000. Or take any other action relative thereto. It's proposed by the fire chief and the buildings, facilities and capital expenditure committee does recommend this article. Uh, I'd like to take a motion. Kathleen moves the article. Chuck seconds. All right, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All right, we'll move to vote, John. Yes. Al. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Dave. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Scott. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. Chuck. Yes. And I vote yes, it is unanimous. Uh, we'll move on to Article 25. Uh, mine's cut off here, so. To see if the town will vote to appropriate $35,000 from free cash to replace slash repair the sidewalks at the Conley and Duval Elementary Schools and the Whitman Middle School or take any action relative thereto. Proposed by the Whitman Hanson Regional School District School Committee and the Capital Committee does recommend this article. I'll entertain a motion. Kathleen moves the article. Chuck seconds. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion on Article 25. Okay, we'll move to vote, John. Yes. Al. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Dave. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Scott. <coughs> Rosemary. Yes. Chuck. Yes. And I vote yes. 9-0. Article 26, I think is the next one. To see if the town will vote to appropriate 160,000 for free cash to purchase and install generators at the Conley and Duval Elementary Schools or take any other action relative thereto. It is proposed by the Whitman Hanson Regional School District School Committee. And Dave, you did say that the committee voted to recommend. Is that correct? correct. Yes. Okay. So that's not listed here. <clears throat> Further, just, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Kathleen moves the article. Chuck will second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Okay, all in favor, John? Yes. Al? Not enough information. Abstain. Abstain, okay. Kathleen? Yes. Dave? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Scott. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. Chuck. Yes. And I vote yes. We have an eight uh, zero one with uh, Al abstaining on Article Twenty Six. And I believe that brings us to Article Twenty Nine, which which we did vote, but our vote isn't reflected in this warrant, as far as I can see. Uh, Article 29 uh, was the collective bargaining agreement uh, with the firefighters. Um, and at our last meeting, we did vote 8-0 uh, to recommend this. Does anybody recollect anything different than that? I just want to add something. They, in 2017, we voted, uh, we went into an agreement to give a position, to put a position and they, they, we've told the 
the unions and the firefighters that we can't afford it, that we can't pay that one hundred and thirty thousand um, dollar position of a uh, administrative deputy, deputy, because we can't afford it. But in fact, we were diverting money to another town. Um, that seems wrong. Um, they, they've put this off. I, I I would think that we would want to include that in that. And I don't know if they'd have to renegotiate it or what could happen, but I do think that that's a, uh, that if we're, if we're negotiating in good faith and it turns out, especially last year that people knew that money was going over and was withholding it from the taxpayers of Whitman and the union negotiation process, um, I, would, I would have some questions on what they could do about it now that it's out in the open and uh, they could make that right. Okay. Rosemary, when, you say, when you say we, um, who do you mean by we? Who define we? Well, it would be the it would be the selectmen. What they said in the television meeting was that we knew in 2017, Ms. Lamatina approached the board in 2017 and told them that the money was going over, that the statutory method wasn't being used, and it had to be. It, it's in their interviews, both of them. Um, well, they, Rosemary. So, if so I what may, I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, they're saying they couldn't afford it, but they could. When they said this, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Like I said, we don't want to go backwards. We're we're, we're moving forward as far as recommendations for this article. Go ahead. I would doubt that the town moderator would allow discussion on an article we've already passed. So this one, Article 29, has already been voted eight zero. Um, there are other new uh, collective bargaining. Warrant articles now that weren't on the warrant that we voted last time. Uh, so we have Article 30, we have Article 31, we have Article 32, and we have Article 33. Mm, so I would imagine that the Board of Selectmen is hopeful that they can negotiate with these bargaining units prior to town meeting and establish a dollar figure to insert into these articles. So for us as a finance committee for our recommendations, I would suggest that we don't make, um, uh, you know, uh, we would not make recommendations on an article that we have no dollar figure. So I would imagine that these particular four articles would be then a uh, recommendation would be made on town hall floor. Does anybody yeah, see mo different? Yeah, mo you want a motion to pass over and wait till town hall floor? I don't even think we need a motion to uh, pass over. I, I just think that we'll make a notation that the, uh, uh, finance committee will make a recommendation on the town hall floor as the other ones that are lacking a dollar figure. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, if, yeah. If you that's want fine. a formal motion to pass over, or we could do it collectively with the four uh, articles. Rick, no, motion I, to pass over. Okay. So we have a motion. I'll second it. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, Can we have further discussion? We certainly may. Um, I just want to say that I'm, I don't know, a little concerned also again. Uh, I think a couple times over the last few years, I remember the town administrator would talk about how it was never uh, a good practice to have all, all unions having contracts due at the same time. Um, he, he made mention to the fact that it's good to have them broken up. And uh, here we are because of some of the situations, it sounds like uh, we're we're going to be negotiating all these new contracts. So uh, where do we go from here? They're all going to be coming due again um, in the future. And from what Frank has said before, that's not a good thing because it can turn into a, a large sum of money sometimes if there are, you know, a lot of big colas and stuff. So I'm just uh, just bringing that up. Chuck, I, I would tend to agree with you as someone who's been involved uh, quite a bit with collective bargaining. Um, I would also submit that if we're getting it into collective bargaining for one year contracts, we're not on the, the good side of the uh, bargaining table because uh, obviously part of the collective bargaining process is to determine a length uh, for the contract. This isn't really a good situation to be bargaining in anyway. Um, so I, with respect to the duration of in, the, in each of these warrant articles are a one-year collective bargaining agreement. So um, maybe that would be a question that we could follow up. Uh, we're not making any recommendations 
are are actually we're tabling these four articles. Is, is, the, is the motion on the floor? Is that correct? Yep. Correct. So your your point is well taken. Thank Anybody you. else want to speak? Okay. Um, so we'll move to vote to table articles 30 through 34, uh, articles 30 through 33. Um, John. Yes. Al. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Dave. Ralph. Yes. Scott. Yes. Rosemary. <coughs> yes. Chuck. Yes. And I vote yes. So we'll table those four articles. Um, and I believe, if I am not mistaken, there are no other warrant articles that we can act on or need to act on. Does anybody else see anything that we're missing? I think that that does it for this warrant. So I'll get these votes to, uh, uh oh. I stopped the sharing. Hey, there's everybody. Uh, I lost everybody. All I have is a Zoom. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oops. John, can you get me back? I don't. I, it's not in the, all I did was stop the sharing of the document. So you're there, it's, Rick. We see it's you. there somewhere. Yes. We're seeing you. I yeah. Is it, it underneath? Need... What? Is it underneath? Uh, do you have another document open? Oh, or? there it is. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, that's it for the warrant. Um, on your agenda, the next item is the Article 2. So um, I guess I will entertain a motion if, if it is the will of the body to reconsider the recommendations that were previously made on Article 2 based on the fact that we are now looking at different documents in a different world. So if that's the, uh, I think it would just save time other than going back and reconsidering the uh, Article 2 line items that we have already questioned is to just go back through the process to reconsider the entire Article 2 and then go page by page to question line items and then we'll move I to had a, vote recommendations. Go ahead, Rosemary. I have, I have one thing. All of these other unions are meeting now with all the information. I think that we should allow the fire to also be within that same. Um, I think we should not have an amount. I want to reconsider have not have an amount and have them we can have negotiations fairly across the board because they did theirs early without all the information well i would ask to reconsider that vote well we 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 can't reconsider the the collective bargaining process okay. that's already taken place no no we can't but we can give them an opportunity to reapproach and with all the information with everybody like everybody else has everybody else yeah, that's what they want to do I don't know. I'm just thinking that that would be. Just well, I think we should find out before we before we. Yeah. Okay. Motion to reconsider. Right. Okay. Good point, though. Thank but you. we'll find out if they. If that's something that. Okay. So back to Article Two. Um, I would suggest that someone make a motion to reconsider the action that the Finance Committee took with respect to Article Two previously. I'll make that motion, Kathleen. And Rosemary seconds, any further discussion? Okay, we'll take a vote, John. Yes. Uh, Al. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Dave. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Scott. Yes. Chuck. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. Okay, and I vote yes. Okay, so now we'll uh, take a look. Uh, does everybody have a copy of Article 2? The latest draft is dated <clears throat> June 5th, 2020. Oh, yeah. Does anybody need a copy of it or does everybody have it? Give me a minute. Okay. 
All right, we'll give you a moment. Do you have, can you put it up, John? I, the computer that I'm on has all my information, my other one. That's why I was late. So. <sighs> um, I have the file that Frank sent us. Is it dated uh, June the 5th? I have the revision of 5 2 2020. 5 2? That's what I made, that's what it says on it, but. The date, well, I, I, well, I've made a bunch of uh, notes on mine. Um, on the on the right hand side, it should have a date of six five. Can you pull up a new one out of your email, first? Because I emailed this last week. Well, I'm looking at the Excel file. I'm looking at my emails. I don't see anything June fifth or after with the uh, article two on. It should have came the same day that the new warrant came. It came right with it. It was attached. I think it was in the same document. Oh. I think it was like more than one page, like in one document. If you go down the bottom of the document, I believe there was the warrant and then there was the article two. If I get it, you guys must have gotten it. Yeah, I think we got it. That was uh, the day Frank sent that out to you, Rick, and you were, right. you were away. Yeah, and I was away and I forwarded it by my phone. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking at that on that date on that email stream. I just I don't see a date anywhere on it. I'm looking at the spreadsheet well, myself. Yeah, at the bottom of the spreadsheet on the right hand side, it says okay. 6 5 2020. When was it? Go email? all the way down. When was the email? Chuck, do you got the date on the email? Um, I think it was the 31st. The 31st would have been Saturday. I'm sorry, no, 6 1. 6 1. So that would have been Monday. Monday of last week. That's when all of these documents were sent out. Yeah, that's when you sent them out to us, Rick. Do you have the name of the file? Is it 531, version 9, 531, 2020? Yeah, on the left hand side, it does say 531. I have that. Version 5, it's yes. Yeah, I got it. right hand the side. Title, it's six the title of the email says "Package to the Selectman." That's the heading of the email. Yep. Correct. That's the one I'm working off of, also. Okay. And it does can, say. Can you find it. Okay. And I do see a 5:31 when I pull it up on my small screen. I'm not the technology person, but I don't see the date when I put it on full view. But that, that's well, if we find a discrepancy in like the numbers, like, so for instance, Chuck, on yours, uh, page one has line items one through 40. Is yours? Um, yeah, actually, I got it on a whole thing. I, got, I have everything on one page. I just scroll down. Oh, wow. It doesn't yeah. really show you. I'm looking doesn't at show page breaks. Not on mine. I have an Excel no. file. Is that what I have then? <laughs> 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 Actually, I just I, I see. I, I print everything out. I can't. I can't change yeah. my screen. You'd lose me. So I only have one screen. All right. So, so John, are you able to put up something? Well, the file that I have that's dated five thirty one. I've made some edits. I've been made some notes on. So I don't know if it'll look at exactly like what you have, but I'll share what I have. Okay. I, I would regularly have another computer, but it, it wouldn't log in. So, so I'm using the one that I take notes with. So sorry. So this is what I have. And, and I actually highlighted in yellow the lines that we had already voted. OK. Um, Do you want to unhighlight them so that way we can use your highlighting to make a note of the question items? Moving forward. Well, I also carried over the amount, the ones that we did approve, I kind of carried over all the amounts. Oh, well. yeah. So I guess we could use that document as a guide, but. We just ignore the shading and I, right. didn't, I don't well, want to undo for, it all. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but for the purpose of this meeting, I think if we could get through article two and question the line items, we should have sufficient time at our meeting next week to then vote recommendations on the questions line items 
Does anybody think that that won't be enough time to do that in one meeting? Uh, it does go pretty quickly once once the questioned line items. Uh, yeah, and I think most of the questioned ones were just salary lines, anyways. That's what we right. left with, right? Right. Yeah, correct. correct. And we and we actually discussed last meeting about including the colas in and so I think that's what come back in this new file is that he's included the colas in the unions he's got broken out over here. Yeah, way down the bottom there, John. Yeah, way on the right. He's got all the unions and then he's got the non unions yeah. in there as well. So the non unions were carried out but the union colas are going to be in those four articles that we just passed over. So I don't think those amounts are going to be in this article. Um, well, that is in fact, if those uh, bargaining units get collective bargaining agreements prior to town meetings, right? Those, those four warrant articles could be passed yeah. over. Yeah. Actually, I'm at, I'm at the bottom of mine guys. And I, I see, uh, Frank has, even though he's got it in an expended 2019 category, he's listed out uh, union fire 59,889. Right, right there. Union library 4216. Yeah, look at all that. That seems to be, that might be the amount he's. Uh, correct. Well, he shouldn't be putting up if they haven't bargained him, correct? No, but I think he's, that's the amount that uh, would be equal to what the, the fire got. So that's yeah. 2%, I believe. Yeah. Probably right. Because even that total increased salary cost, uh, 190,000. Um, that's kind of one that I had, uh, when I read the express, I, I knew there was a, it, it was kind of misrepresented as, a, and I thought it was closer to that 190. All right, so are we ready to um, go yeah. page by page and question line items for article two? And then with the expectation that we'll then vote the, uh, question line items at our next meeting. Sure. Okay. All right, so on page one, as I have it, um, are line items one through 40. Questions? No questions on page one. Does anybody need more time? No. No, okay. Page two, I have line items 41 through 73. Questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to page three. I have line items 75 to 103. Questions? Seeing none, I'll move to page four. I have line items 105 to 156. Questions? All right, we'll move to page five. I have line items 160 to line 190. Oh, go ahead, Kathleen. Uh, I'd like to discuss line 178 
the non-mandated busing. Okay. Uh, we've received extensive well, you know Can Sorry. I just clarify? Sure. Um, so we're questioning the line items now, right? So the discussion will take place when we, after we vote all the unquestioned lines, okay. then we'll go back and we'll discuss the question line. Okay. Is that all right with you? Perfect. Okay. So I will uh, question line 175. 178. Yeah, you wanted 178, I wanted 175. So we have okay. two on that page Perfect. so far. Anybody else? Okay, moving to page six. I have lines 191 to 218A. I'd like to question 210. 210. Any others on page six? Line items 191 to 218A. That's you, Rick. Okay. What? What? Did I miss something? Yeah, Rick, animal control officer. Okay, Al. Uh, 217. The whole line okay. item. Actually, the uh, 217 and 218. Okay, 217, 218. All right. Anything else on page six? Okay, moving on to page seven. We have lines 219 to 247. I'd like to question 244. 244. And Rick, I'd like to question the uh, Recreation Department. Okay, so. All, all four question. lines, Al? All, all of them. four lines, Al? All of them. Okay, 239, 240, 241, and 242. Okay, anything else on page seven of 11? 245, Rick. 245. All right. Anything else? We'll move to page eight. I have lines 248 to 261i. 261i. So it goes all the way down to all of the interest of maturing debts on that page, debt service. <clears throat> all right. No questions on page eight. We'll move to page nine. We have lines 262 to 429. Questions? All right, seeing none, we'll move to page 10. We have lines 430 to 440. Have the budget reserve numbers stayed the same throughout the um, Article 2s we've had? Yeah. Okay. No questions on page 10. Page 11 is really just uh, talking about contractual step increases and salary increases by category. So I don't, those, those aren't really 
questionable items, as it were. Okay. All right, so just to review, I have questions on line One seventy five, one seventy eight, two ten, two seventeen, two eighteen. Was two eighteen a also? I don't think so. No. No. Okay. Uh, two thirty nine, two forty, two forty one, two forty two. 244 and 245. And those are the question line items. Does anybody see anything else? You can take another minute and breeze through to see if there's anything else that you want to question. Does anybody need more time? All right. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to recommend lines that have not been questioned. So moved. Kathleen, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion on all unquestioned line items in Article 2. We move to a vote, John. Yes. Al. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Dave. Yes. Ralph. You're muted. Yes. Scott. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. Chuck. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. So, uh, being uh, two hours into the meeting, I would hope that we could move to uh, continue our work at our next meeting next week. Um, right now we have uh, upcoming meetings scheduled for Tuesday and then annual town meeting. Like I said, I will post both of them. Um, one other old business item uh, that uh, media outreach. Kathleen, you want to just give a quick update on the last uh, media outreach? Sure. Uh, um, so. Uh, although we were really appreciative of the Whitman Hanson Express uh, allowing Rick to present the um, guest column on our behalf, uh, they were not able to provide space for the tables. And without being able to take a look at the numbers, it really doesn't tell the story. It's really the numbers that tell the story, not the narrative. And so I took the initiative to contact the um, Whitman Hanson Express advertising department and asked them if we could put the same letter that the, the full committee agreed to including the tables and purchase the space necessary for um, the uh, the woman's name was Deb I forget her last name um, she runs the advertising department so that people could read the entire story because without the tables the story is sort of um, just a bunch of words and so she agreed to it. I put the uh, cost of that ad on my personal charge, my personal um, credit card. No Whitman taxpayer funds were expended to purchase that space. And the two, page, the two, you know, it's an investment in this community. I think it's important for everyone to understand what's at stake here. And so others have contributed. I'm not looking to pass the hat. I'm happy with what we've got. Um, but it's a beautiful spread. It tells the story. It has a lot of people in both towns talking and it really, it's not meant to be an editorial. It was not an editorial. It was a, an informative piece. It was an open letter to Hanson and Whitman residents so that misinformation provided by people who don't know what they're talking about could finally be countered by those of us who've been working really hard to, to, to take a look at the numbers that are going into funding education. And if you don't know the story behind chapter 70 funding, then you can start going off saying, we don't want this method, we don't want that method, we want a better method than the one they're offering. They don't have options. The options are statutory or get the other town to agree to something. And so that's the you know end of the story. I'm sure there's gonna be some controversy uh, pursued 
uh, you know, who are you to write this, but I'm a private citizen and I paid for it out of my own pocket and I appreciate uh, other people saying, let me help you out here. But it, there is there's no taxpayer funds here. It was just uh, an information piece. Well, this Whitman taxpayer is more than helping to subsidize. Uh, I Thank think it was very important. I appreciate the fact that you reached out and that we were able to put the article in its entirety because it definitely makes, uh, you know, it makes a very informative piece. So, I think people should know that right now they are very upset at the we're getting little text messages at um, the Hanson BOS. They are saying um, because it calls them out calls out what they've done and what they're not being honest with their citizens. Um, they, they want to take legal action, <laughs> all kinds of silliness. And, and I invite that for any Hanson citizen. I invite that because those are facts well, and they can right. be backed. Get, getting back to the media outreach, I was pleasantly surprised to open up my copy of the Express and see the whole thing there with numbers. And I was like, how the heck did this happen? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, please, thank you very much. It does, uh, it does show Thank information you. with the numbers. Thank you. I, I do have a question. Um, um, you did list two names. You listed Rick's name and your name, and you also listed chairman and member of the Whitman Finance Committee. That's what printed. So, mm -hmm. so now that's no longer a personal citizen. That's a representative of the Whitman Finance Committee. We so, voted that in. We vo it's we, just exactly what we approved. I understand this that. This board voted. This board voted to put that article in the paper. We didn't, a, we didn't vote a, to pay for it. We didn't vote no. to do it as a paid political advertising, which is what it's being conceived as. Well, it could be perceived as anything, but Nobody the fact that we Nobody, ran it twice doesn't change the fact that this board recommended the article to be public. Well, the, yeah. the, what, what, what is the difference? The what question is, is, is now it becomes a paid political advertising and it falls within PAC, uh, PAC laws. So there who, could be issues. Who, who who paid for it that's running for something? Rick and Kathy aren't running for anything. No, but they post, for it? they posted it under Whitman Finance Committee. They listed their names as Whitman Finance Committee members. So it changes so, everything that it now becomes a I don't think that's political true. advertising. Yeah. I, I well, John, I'm just John, that's your opinion. I I'm that's willing to deal with the legal ramifications. I I I feel that this board voted to put the letter in the newspaper and it doesn't matter if it was published once or twice, the information contained therein was the will of this body. And that was a unanimous decision to publish the article. So it I, I really doesn't it. matter that it was published once and then published again. I think the only reason the second time was necessary is because the newspaper could not fit the charts uh and tables yeah. plus on the first run i didn't see any reference to any any links to to get that information yeah there is a link and our the document is posted on the um the town government uh page under the finance committee so voters can go get the information from there as well josh uh did get back to the committee to let us know that the information was put uh, on the town okay Website. Uh, just one other question. Um, Rick, were you aware that uh, Kathleen was doing this? Was I aware? Yes, I'm fully complicit. Okay. So and you I made it clear that I would help uh, subsidize the cost. As okay. Well. So I, I just have one statement quickly. I want to know why are we fighting to get fighting. the facts out? No, uh, to get the facts out to our citizens. Okay. I'm concerned. Why, why aren't our concerns that our citizens aren't getting these facts, that they're being kept? in the dark why aren't we fighting as hard for that why aren't we saying that that's the truth these numbers were put out to the public we are representing the public we can inform them all, you know and we voted well, that, for this that's country. a good segue into the june 22nd town meeting because as a finance committee it's going to be incumbent on me to present with whoever wants to help present and i would respectfully ask kathleen to help uh, present um, the vote of the finance committee and the majority of the finance committee uh, does not support uh, article seven and it's going to be incumbent on this committee to explain to the voters why we are not recommending uh, article seven so i think you know the media outreach is one thing but we have an obligation as a finance committee to educate the taxpayers and um you know town meeting is the time to do that so 
Um, if we have an opportunity to get information to the voters prior to that, I, I can't see any reason why the will of this body shouldn't be stated well in advance. So, I'm, no lawyer, I'm no lawyer, but you know, I, I, it really uh, upsets me that uh, two things is one that this, our article that we voted on to be put into a newspaper was, was put in the newspaper, but then paid for again to be put in again. So uh, I have huge reservations on that issue. And I, don't see, I can't see why, Dave. The article as it was put in the paper the first thing, time, like I said, it might be a didn't tell the whole thread. story. It, it might, it was, it we be, voted on something. We voted on something. It wasn't put in the way we voted on it. Kathleen and Rick took up the obligate. Took that's up not the point. You guys are using right. the point. The point is you paid for it. You made a paid political advertisement. It's not, I think. It's not I think. Political. I think. We, I think that we should. It's I think. I think that's an interesting. Um, but, but nobody's running for any political office that act or or holds up political office that did this. It was Kathleen and Rick. So I, I do think that this some, is an odd angle here that you might want to just explain to me. Why is it political? Why is it political? What do you mean? What, I don't understand question. what you mean. What Why is, is it political, political Dave? We, it's not a political not, did not, advertisement. It was, we were it's a unable, financial information. It's a paid we advertisement. You know, like I said, we I'm, I'm no attorney, but I'm sure there are there are attorneys out there for other groups that will let us know whether or not that violates anything. I'm oh, looking forward to hearing from them. The, secondly, secondly, we have two committee members talking outside of a public meeting about putting this putting this article in the newspaper, Repre representing themselves as Whitman Finance Committee members, and putting this in outside of public meeting you guys it, like, oh, there's, oh, 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 there's no the issue with violated it violated an open meeting law no. uh, you're making this oh, rick y'all making this committee look like fools by skirting no, uh, right. and rubbing it yeah. rubbing up against this uh, is theatrical uh, david this is theatrical. all right dave, dave. I, yeah. think, yeah. theatrical. I think you made your point i'm gonna you end the, the discussion it's Rosemary, Dave, we Rosemary, get off your soap. Rosemary, this is a campaign we, hour for you. We, I'm going to have to bang a gavel. Go ahead, yeah, please. I, I, I'd rather need I'd order. I'd we voted two people. We voted two people. To make it as Dave, as well. the discussion has ended. Please refer the comments to the next time that we. The discussion doesn't talk. end until until it ends. Yeah. Well, in this meeting, it ended. No, it didn't. I made the decision to end the discussion. Okay, well, my decision is is to make a motion to this meeting that you resign for being completely incompetent. <laughs> oh, this oh, is in line oh, with exactly no, no, what they're no. saying in Hanson. It's oh. very, very you guys are, coordinated. Uh, I, I, think, I think this is getting I think up. we're going way off topic here. I, yeah. Do you have any other issues that are before the committee under new business? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have one. Lisa, I have new business. Lisa, Dave, you're out of order. Dave, no, not out of you're out of order. order. Hey, Lisa, one question to on meeting. town meeting, I'm please. Sorry for the lack of decorum. Um, but is there anything from the Board of Selectmen that you would like to bring up to the committee? I, I do want, I would like to let the um, committee know that the Board of Selectmen did vote to postpone town meeting until July. Um, oh, wow. I believe the date that they set, they set was July 27th. Um, so that, I just wanted to update the board on that um, development. Okay, then. That definitely gives us a little bit more time because we were down to one meeting. So we appreciate that. Anybody uh, have any questions for Lisa? Yeah, Lisa, was there any determination yet of uh, where that will be held? Um, well, they're still looking at the high school at this point. Um, there hasn't been any discussion of any other um, venue at this point. Oh, okay, um, the high you. school is the safest place um, that they've determined that they can place anybody who attends town meeting to fit the social distancing guidelines. Okay, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions for Lisa? All right, if there's no other business, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I, I have further business. I just want to express my dismay. Yeah, that... Dave, you've done that. Add no, not... don't try to shut yes. me down. This is a At... committee. You may be a chair. I am entertaining a motion to it. adjourn, Dave. You have made your point. No, you, you asked me to resign. No, you asked if there's any more business. This is I my think business. Says it all, Dave. You want me to resign because I'm incompetent. Is that really a summary no. of your comments? I okay. want you. To, I want you to yeah. resign because you, you would like to make a motion to adjourn, please. Yeah, you. Make a motion. Second. Second. You have a motion and a Chuck second. Will second. Not debatable.
Chuck will second. To a vote, John. Yes. Al. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Dave. No. Ralph. Yes. Scott. Yes. Chuck. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you.